Welcome back to the Avamid again from in-depth tech reviews and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 38 and this is the first episode to include the new Pixel 6 Pro. And the other good news is there are a lot to share in this video. Before starting let me remind you to subscribe to the channel as I'm planning to release a lot of new exciting videos that you shouldn't miss out if you are a Google fan. And now let's see what's new with Google Apps. Let's start with YouTube and the first change is the new Android 12 splash screen so let me show you this one more time. It's a little bit more animated than before. The second change is in the home feed autoplay feature. Now we have the ability to mute or unmute, activate or deactivate the captions, which is something I showed you before in my previous videos, but the feature disappeared for some reason and now it's back again, in addition to the ability to scrub through the video. At the top we got a new filter called mixes, which will show you all the recommended playlists you can listen to. This new one is a slightly different from music, which will show you individual songs in addition to the playlists as well. Another new feature we got here is called listening controls. When you start playing any video and then tap on the viewfinder, you will see a small chip here called listening controls. Tapping on it will give you a touch friendly media controls so you can change the tracks, jump forward and backward, change the speed, in addition to save it to your watch later or hit the like button. This feature is labeled as premium at the top left corner, which means it's only available for premium users. Another way to access this feature is by tapping the ellipses button and then it shows listening controls. If you listen to music in the normal YouTube app, you should have seen a banner before giving you the option to continue listening in the YouTube music app instead, but this banner is now gone. And when you tap on the ellipses button, you will see a new option here called listen with YouTube music, which will do exactly the same thing. Another button that has been removed from the overlay controls is the more info and now it's located under the same menu. Now I switch it to a different Google account to show you one more visual change that I don't have in my premium account which is the new rounded buttons under the video. So they are smaller than before and match the same design language of Android 12 and you will get a nice shade when you tap on any of the buttons. And as you may know, Google also removed the dislikes count. And the last change is in YouTube for Android TV. Now when you open any playlist, you will see a new interface with three buttons on the left, either to play all, loop, or save to library. And now it's time for today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by cdkeoffers.com. It's an online digital store that sells original Windows 10 and the office keys in a very discounted price. Not only this, but you can use my special promo code ID20 to get extra 20% discount. As you see, you can get yourself a Windows 10 OEM key for $15.55, which is insanely cheap. Please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. Next. YouTube music. And the first change is the new Christmas mix. And when you go to library, you will no longer see a gray background for the recent activity section. However, it now matches the rest of the page. And finally, under the from the community section, now you will see the profile picture of the account that shared the song. Next, Google Play Store. And the only change I'm gonna show you today is the ability to remotely install apps from your phone to your Android TV. If both are signed in with the same Google account, all you need to do is to expand the install button and you should see any Android TV you have. In this case, I have Chromecast with Google TV. When I take the box and then tap on install, I should expect this app to be on my Chromecast after a while. Now let's talk about Gboard and the first change is the bigger pop-ups on key press. So as you see, they are much bigger than before. And also when you go to Google Chrome and then tap on the navigation bar at the top, you will get different shortcuts here. So for example, here I have the cursor selection tools and also one-handed mode. While if I use Gboard in any other app, I'm getting different options like stickers and GIFs instead. There is one more change that I only got on my Pixel 4a. Now when I go to settings, the headers at the top are now collapsible. So as you see, the word settings changes to a smaller font and moves towards the top. Similarly, all sub menus will do exactly the same, no matter how many items you have on the screen. And it looks very similar to One UI if you are familiar with it. Next, Google app. And the first change is under the Discover feed. When you scroll down a little bit, you will see a new section called Short Videos, which will recommend for you some YouTube shorts. And when you tap on any of them, it will take you to the YouTube app to continue watching and instead of playing the videos inside Google Discover, like normal YouTube videos. The second change is inside the app itself. When you open it for the first time, you won't see the same search bar like before, but once you start scrolling, it will appear at the bottom of the screen. And when you scroll back up, it will be hidden. 
This will give you more space for checking your articles and now it's much easier to reach. And finally, the refresh animation is now bigger inside the app and also in Google Discover. Next, Gmail. And it got an updated Material U widget that gives you more options compared to the previous one. First, you can archive your emails directly from here and also revert back your action. And when you make it bigger, you will get more buttons. So for example, because I have Google Meet activated inside Gmail, now I have this button that will take me right away to the Meet tab. Now I activated Google Chat as well inside Gmail and I got two extra buttons. One takes me to the chat tab and the other one takes me to spaces. And when you change the size of the widget, the buttons will change their position. So for example, when I make it taller, the three buttons on the side are now showing at the bottom, but the new email button will always show at the top right corner. Next, Google Maps. And now you will be able to see the crowdness of any place directly on the map without doing any extra steps. So for example, all the pins with the red circle underneath it means they are busier than usual. And if the area doesn't include any specific place, you will get another indicator here telling you it's a busy area so you can tap on it to know more. The second change is under the map layers. Now we have a new option called wildfires which will show you any wildfires across the globe and I found quite few in the US. They are presented with these red dots. Next, Google search. And the first change is the dark theme support. Once I opened google.com, I got this banner saying dark theme is now available so I can turn on the feature. And this is how Google looks like in dark theme and if you want to return back to light theme you can use the hamburger menu on the left side and then choose to turn off the feature and when you search for anything and then scroll all the way down once you start scrolling back up you will see this new floating button that takes you back to the top of the page lastly Google search can now show you a 3d model for specific landmarks across the world and one of them is Eiffel Tower so here I have the view in 3D option where I can check all the sides of the tower the way I want and also view in your space using the camera. You should see now on the screen the full list of landmarks you can check in 3D. Next, Google Messages. And the first change is the new dot that will appear next to your unread messages in addition to the same bold font we used to have before. And when you go under settings, you will see all the toggles are now matching the device theme if it's turned on. And once you turn off the switch, it will turn into black. And finally, if an iPhone user reacted to any of your messages using iMessage, these reactions will appear in Google Messages as emojis instead of only text like before. Unfortunately, I don't have another SIM card in my iPhone to show you how it works in action, but here are some screenshots. Next, Gcam. And with the latest update, Google pushed a couple of new features to older Pixel models that were only available on the Pixel 6. The first one is called Exposure. When you turn off the switch, the exposure sliders will disappear from the viewfinder. And the second one is under Advanced. It's called Timer Light. So if you are using the camera timer like this, it will use the flash to let you know when the photo is taken. In one of my previous videos, I showed you how to get those two features on older Pixel models by installing a modded version from the Pixel 6, but now they are officially available. Now let's talk about some of the system features exclusive only to Pixel users. And the first one is the game dashboard. If you are using an older Pixel model other than the Pixel 6 and then access the dashboard, you will see the optimization options are now available. And also Google Play Games integration is finally rolling out to older models as well. Those two features were only available on the Pixel 6 when I first saw them. But let me show you one more feature in the game dashboard that I only found on the Pixel 6 for now. When you go to apps and then game settings and turn off the game dashboard shortcut and then start a new game. Once you pull down the status bar, you will see this floating gamepad button that will give you access to the game dashboard options even if you don't have the shortcut activated. So let's wait and see if this new feature will also make its way to older pixel models. Another change I found under settings is for the now playing feature. So when you go to sound and vibration and then now playing and when you start to play any music on your phone you will get this new banner in red saying that songs aren't identified while device audio is being used by other apps. This is the first time to see this banner and I also found it on older pixel models so it's not something exclusive to the Pixel 6. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you in this episode. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And if you got your hands on any new feature related to Google Apps, please reach me out on social media to include it in my future videos. But for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.